Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in surah Taha ولا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لنفتنهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وأبقى My brother and sister in Islam in this verse and many verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalalu he advises us as believers not to draw our sight towards the dunya and what's in the dunya and not to draw our attention towards what many have and many have been given and to be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse particularly he explains to us the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given others but more importantly my brother and sister in Islam we take from this verse in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us teaching us to not be a people that love the shuhra that love always to be known by what we have and to accumulate all of these different things because that is not the goal of the believer my brother and sister in Islam and somewhat we have lost that perspective Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in this verse in the second part of the verse telling us the reason why many of the people have been given a lot especially the ones that don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says he says لنفتنهم في it's a fitna my brother and sister in Islam having a lot having a lot is a fitna and from having a lot being popular it is a big fitna and being known is a big fitna and having the attention that we see that many have and we cannot obtain it is a fitna mentally physically emotionally it is a fitna for the human in general and that's why when you look at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you see that from the characteristics of prophethood was that he stayed away from these things and thus did his companions and thus did the pious predecessors that came after and i want to tell you something my brother and sister in islam we need to return back to the examples of the ones that came before us starting from the prophet the companions and then the pious predecessors and i want to give you a example an example of the great giant in Islam the great example in Islam Amr ibn Abdul Aziz may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him this great man this great man of zuhud this great man of worship and leadership this great just man one day he was sitting and a man said to him Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen oh the leader of the believers inna min qablika كانت الخلافة لهم زينا. He says to him, this man sitting with him or near him, he says, Oh Amir, oh the leader of the believers, that before you there came people that were also in your position, but the position that they have, it kept them. The position of خلافة and being the خليفة, it gave them a status. And then he says to him, وَأَنْتَ زَيْنُ الْخِلَافَةِ But you, but you, O oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, you are the one that gives status and you are the one that beautifies the position of being the leader of the Muslims. Allahu Akbar. You need, subhanAllah, a comment like this, many of us not just want to hear it but many of us we are rushing and running towards trying to find that status many of us we work and study so hard in order that we can be given the title that we are great at what we do and we are great in the position that we are in 
And even though many would reply to this and say, yeah, what's the problem with that? There is no issue, my brother. Is it really the case? Is it really the case that the next part of the statement of Amr, what he says in reply or his action to show us that real success is literally, literally trying your best to stay away from what the people care about and how the people see you as a person. So after he says this, the man to Amr, what was the reply or what was the action of Amr? It was said, فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهُ Subhanallah. To the meaning that he left him. He left him, my brother and sister in Islam. He didn't even reply to him. He left the position that he was in. He left the place that he was in. He went silent and he moved away from him. My brother and sister in Islam, this great action by this great man, and many other examples in this religion from great men that understood this religion better than you and I, that dedicated their life to the understanding of this religion. They understood that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in different ayat in the Quran, like this ayah in Surah Taha, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَ بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِي وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى That at the end of the day, my brother and sister in Islam, do not worry about what others have and do not run and rush in order to compete with what, what others have and how you look and what your status is and where your position is. Rather understand that it is a fitna. It is an absolute trial to be in position, to be in status, to be in leadership. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He finishes in this ayah and He says, وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَىٰ And the, at the end result, and the end reward, the rizq, the sustenance, meaning the akhirah, is better for you and it will be a, a, a status or a reward that would be forever, my brother and sister in Islam. Barakallahu feekum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.